yeah, I love hunting. I'm passionate about it, I love to do it, and I want to make sure that I can do it till I'm 70, and my kids can do it till they're 70, and so on. There's been very limited previous studies in New Zealand on mallards. I am really keen on, on what we do, and I see the value in what we do. Now, this is going to be probably the most, well, one of the most important bits of research that we do for Fish and Game in the next foreseeable future, really. Fish and Game was set up to administer sports fishing, game bird hunting, sports fishing and game bird hunting in, in New Zealand. We're a fully licensed pay funded, so it's a user owns, user pays system. We've got a three year project in place for this particular facet. We're looking at de developing a population model or a productivity model for mallards in New Zealand. I'm Peter Shaw and I get a lot of the ducks that I have here, I have about 150 young ones at the moment. I take them and look after them and I work together with Fish and Game with planting trees for our nursery. So there's thousands of trees around that Fish and Game has supplied us. And there's trees around here now that are keeping birds in the area. I think the study that they're doing now is a must because our numbers are going down and we are finally realising what the predators are actually doing. So we've got three different types of technology. We're using satellite transmitters, GPS loggers and radio telemetry equipment. Once we caught the birds, put the harness transmitter on them and um, yeah, then it's a matter of activating the transmitter and letting the bird go and watching it fly away and listening to the beep disappear as it's gone. So we try to ground locate each of the birds once a week, visually, to get a confirmation of their status. So it's quite, you know, when you have 40 birds out there, it's quite an intensive process going out and trying to get a visual observation on each bird. So just keep an eye out if you see a, a duck, well two ducks it'll be, and one's almost fully fledged offspring. So that's the one that I showed you some trail camera right back there, right back there. Here we're trying to get down to some finer spatial details, um, working out, you know, micro habitat modelling, um, different, you know, how those different habitat types influence um, our survival rates and, and so on. So that's something that you simply can't get unless you're out there intensively ground locating these birds in their own habitats. Mallard ducks are probably the most common duck. They're definitely the most highly harvested duck in New Zealand. So from that sense, um, they're definitely the most important game bird that we have under our administration. So right now we're heading off to um, a site where we've picked up a, a satellite reading for a bird, which is indicating a mortality signal, um, believed to be in a drain. And, um, it does appear to be a, an actual mortality, unfortunately. It's going to be a needle in a haystack material yeah, yeah, yeah. without a signal. The study aims to identify reasons um, why our mallards have declined, what factors are responsible, and then what are those factors that are in our control. And if we're standing here and it was transmitting nice and loud when he was here, I just don't understand why it would have disappeared in the last little while. We're using probably some of the best technology available currently in the world. If he heard it from up on the road, yeah. which is a good 100 metres away, then, you know, it's... Right now, the Even then we should be able to pick it up now. Yeah. That's it mate, get your hand in there. If the bird was here and dead in the drain, you know, we'd definitely be picking up a signal. Right. We're going to get another load of Argos data which may have just about arrived um, for the latest positioning of the bird. Might go have a look on Google and see whether anything's popped up.
Ah, there you go. Here it is. Trans is better. The study for me is uh, it's providing a, a new challenge. There you go. It's been chewed through. Yeah. It's interesting, you know, and, and I love the fact that we're dealing with new technology and experimenting and, you know, right from building transmitters and, and trying new techniques that haven't necessarily been done before. I'm getting a really loud signal. If I turn the gain right up, that's pretty loud. So that's indicating to me that we're probably within 100 metres of that bird right now. You sort of feel like you're, you're breaking new ground in a sense as well, which is exciting, you know, which is what gets you out of bed in the morning. All right, so this is... um. Obviously where we found our dead duck, 150, but we haven't found the whole duck, we found parts of the duck. Quite a bit of carnage here with feathers and bits of the duck. Um, also obviously looking for any sign of any predators, um, there's a double burrow system that goes under here, so we're going to have a bit of a dig and get in tune with our archaeological skills and see what we can find. Going down a We do a lot of work with private landowners building and restoring wetland systems. Obviously having good quality habitat is crucial to our species and making sure that we have as much of that habitat as possible is, um, is a key requirement for us. Predators have played quite a role, and probably a larger role than what we'd anticipated originally. Everything seems to want to eat ducklings, unfortunately. They, you know, whether it's eels, whether it's um, you know pukekos killing them, we've pretty much captured most of them on our trail cameras now. So we know that predators play a role, but is it the overriding role? Just like in humans, there's good mothers and bad mothers when it comes to the duck world as well. Some of them will just leave their ducklings and they'll take off and you know, some mothers will leave their ducklings behind for hours and not come back and half the time that's when they get predated and the hawks come in and have a field day. We are a conservation group. That's what we're here for. We're here to protect the habitat of game birds and freshwater fish. I do believe that you know, some bigger issues such as you know, wetland drainage and, and water quality issues are, are countrywide issues, not just to deal with fishing games. So making sure that people take some ownership over those issues is, is part of it as well. We want to make sure that we can have a sustainable population and give hunters the opportunity to go out and, and hunt those birds during the season. <laughs>